Hello and welcome. I'm Emma. And I'm Tracy. And we are Teddy Teams. <laughs> we are two crafty cousins who live in the south of England who normally get together and show what we've been working on. But we're on Zoom at the moment. Still on Zoom. Yes. Still on Zoom. But anyway, so on today's show, we're going to be talking finishes. I've got a big finish. I've got a big finish. Okay, now you're just showing off. <laughs> I am, right. I think I deserve to. And um, we're going to be talking what about what we're working on. And we're going to be talking about what we'd like to work on in the future. So, and we work on knitting, quilting, sewing, crocheting, baking, you name it. We do all sorts, lots of crafty things. So, grab a cup of tea. Yep. Sit down, get comfy, and join us for the next half hour or so, or however long it takes. <laughs> Could be a while. <laughs> If you're joining us for the first time, it's nice to see you. It's nice to meet you. If you're coming back for more, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to say to that, really. <laughs> thank you and welcome back. Yeah. Now, if you've not been watching us, you're missing out for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> no, it's been a while. I need to get back into the swing of things. Mm. We do actually. We've we've had a look. This is episode number thirty. Number thirty. Yeah. Tracy's shoulder, and um, it's yeah. It's been about six weeks since our last confession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been six weeks, but um, yeah, we posted a little tutorial in between time. So hopefully, you might have watched that. That'd be nice if you did. Uh, and if you did, let us know what you thought. Do you want to see more like that, or was that just not good enough? We just need to know. <laughs> Constructive criticism, please. Constructive criticism, yeah. We appreciate constructive criticism. <laughs> anyway, what are you drinking? I am on a cup of coffee. Yeah. Um, I've probably had far too many today already, but um, I've been very, very cold today. I've been sat around a lot today at the computer, so I got really, really chilly. Mm. Um, so, yeah, another cup of coffee. Okay. Well, I gave up drinking coffee quite a while ago, so I'm on my, uh, on my chamomile tea today. So, but I've switched over from tea bags to loose leaf chamomile. Oh, we're on loose leaf now, are we? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going okay. all eco. <laughs> right then, okay. Teapot or in a little... Uh, no, I bought myself a little strainer. So yeah. that you, you just pop the strainer on top of the, the cup, you know, and then you just pop the leaves. Well, it's not leaves, it's flowers, chamomile flowers, and then just put the hot water in. So, yeah, it's very easy. So. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Interestingly enough, though, as easy as it is, my, my husband still won't make me a cup of tea unless he has um, a tea bag okay what because he thinks it's too much of a faff well, i think so yeah oh okay. yeah. obviously doesn't love me enough does he <laughs> i'm sure he does i'm sure he does just not enough to make you a loose leaf tea that's all uh, anyway I, I find it much easier actually so uh, so you find it there's a difference in flavor Do you, is it a stronger flavor or is it um different? No, I'd say it's about the same, to be honest. It's about yeah. the same. So um, I just, I found that the, because um, I have tea pigs, um, tea bags, which they are supposed to be um, biodegradable. The tea bag itself is supposed to be, you know, it will degrade. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I just don't want to put anything else into the ground that I don't have to. So. Fair enough. And do you keep your tea leaves? Do I keep them? Do you know what? I don't, but I should do really, but I've, I'm not composting at the moment. So um, I will do when I start composting. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I don't compost year round, do you? Yeah, we do actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we do. Yeah. 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 yeah we just have so much of it from the garden anyway that I can't, I, and it's like, oh, more. And I'm not going to walk up the top of the garden either. So it's like a long way to go. So. It is in your garden. I mean, in my little garden, it's not so bad. I have a little composting bucket that sits out the back door, and then yeah. when that gets filled, then it goes out onto the big compost. Yeah. I need to investigate one of those by, what's it called? Um, Bakashi? 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 Akashi, I think it's called that. Yeah. I just need to investigate that because that one I think you can compost um, as well as the sort of the normal sort of veg and 
um, eggshells and that kind of thing can also, I think, I'm not sure about this, I think can also compost meat, which they don't recommend on a normal basis. No. Yeah. So I just need to investigate that. So. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Not that there's ever much meat left in this household anyway, but. Okay, it's always the meat that goes first in this household as well. So. Yeah. Yes. But anyway, how are you? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm not being too bad. I'm not being too bad. Um, a little tired today. I'm a little tired, but that's it. Yeah, I don't know why. It's been a, it's been a couple of weeks of um, repairs. I lost my little car. My little car's gone. Went this morning, actually. Came and towed it away. So yeah. that's gone to the great car heaven in the sky. So oh, right. I did shed a little tear for that. Oh, I had a long time, like 11 years. <laughs> Mm, it's a long time so yeah she was a good old car she was yeah so she was but anyway she uh she gave up the ghost i'm afraid so we've told her to go and help some other cars okay the little minis. so she's got then my sewing machine my long arm machine gave up the ghost for a little while so um i was waiting on some spares coming from the states and then i got one side of it working and then so the, the computer side, it was a computer side that went first. I got that sorted out and then the mechanical side went. <laughs> so, oh, no. Fortunately, I've got uh, technicians that live down the road. So they're, they're all right. Well, I say down the road, it's, you know, 40 miles down the road, which is actually quite close in, in oh, comparison to the States. Yeah. Uh, so they came a couple of weeks ago. So I've just been testing it out this last couple of weeks, make sure it's OK. Yeah. Um, I had a few skip stitch issues, but I think we're more or less there with that now. So uh, so yeah so that's really what I've been doing I've been really sorting out some, some sort of general housekeeping type things you know sort of making sure I'm able to get back to work but I did enjoy absconding from work for a couple of weeks I have to say <laughs> not that I did anything much I was a bit a uh, bit naughty really I sat and uh, watched quite a few things on the television and read a few books and uh, basically sort of put my feet up did not a lot <laughs> well that's not a bad thing that's not a bad thing at all yeah how about yourself yes yeah just um busy doing the same the same things every day but in a slightly different order to shake it up a little bit you know and right. um we had our we had our first vaccination at the weekend all oh, right well done yes um saturday morning which then proceeded to floor us both for saturday evening um and yeah martin was actually in bed by half past nine which is unusual for him right yeah, we, we found that we were we, was, we were zipping in the morning and then by lunchtime, I felt a bit nauseous. Mm -hmm. My arm, upper arm here started hurting where the injection was. Yeah. And uh, by about five o'clock, we were both in bed. We were so tired. We were wiped out. Yeah. We, we just decided, no, it's just no point. Let's just give up and, you know, not worry about it kind of thing. So we did that. And the following morning, we were fine, I have to say. That was, it was just few hours really I suppose yeah. So. yeah we both we both sort of burned up a little bit and got shivers and shakes and just generally felt I suppose fluey fluey yeah um got up on the Sunday morning and felt, felt quite weary a bit sort of wiped out but um by Sunday tea time we were you know, yeah. fine yeah. so okay. have you got your second ones booked in already no we've had a notice to say that they're not booking the second ones as of yet oh um, really Oh, yeah, right. the towers at the same time as the first one actually. So we're uh, no, to May for us. The trouble with supply and everything is is sort of I don't know if it's had a little bit of a halt on on things, but they said they'll let us know as soon as they get supply yeah. in and yeah. get us booked in. So yeah. that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. I was. Uh, did you go to your local surgery or? Uh, no, ours was actually up at the um, on the the camp, the military camp up the road. Oh, okay. Uh, right, right. Up there, so yeah. and I have to say, you know, big thank you to anybody who volunteers for that sort of thing. It was very very slick. We were we were in and out within minutes. Yeah. It was just so easy. Yeah, same with us actually. Yeah, we went to one of the big super places, super centres, and um, I was really impressed with how well it was organised. Yeah. yeah. It was. So, yeah. So uh, I did have to laugh, actually, because somebody I was on a, a Zoom call recently and somebody was volunteering at one of the super centres. And um, I don't know if it was the same for you. When you went in, you had to um, sanitise your hands yeah. before you could even enter the building. Yeah. So, so there was there someone giving you, you know, a, a dose of sanitizer kind of thing. And <laughs> this lady was saying she was doing that. And somebody came up and uh, she went to sanitise. He went, no, thanks. And so she says, well, you won't be getting an injection today, then, will you? <laughs> 
Right, okay. Exactly, so too. Yeah. yeah goodness oh, me. God. What, what difference does it make? You sound, oh, no, people... So, um, he did, he did, apparently. So, it, as any rational person would, really. Yeah. You know, not that you didn't have an excuse not to... I, mean, I suppose if you're allergic to it, that's a different matter, but no. But anyway, it did make me laugh. It did make me laugh. I thought, oh, good for you. I'm pleased that you did that. <laughs> yeah. If you're allergic to it, then you say, well, actually, I'm allergic to it. I've got my own that I can use. And you yeah. just do it that way, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it was interesting inside because... Um, we came across um, at least two people, both, uh, Steve and myself went together, mm-hmm. and we came across a couple of people that we worked with um, oh, 20 years ago. It's quite oh, funny. Really? Yeah. yeah. So it was quite a nice bit of a catch up, really. So like, <laughs> we sat out in the car afterwards and we were watching everybody going in. And of course, it's, you know, it's, it is that very definite age bracket of people yes, going yeah. in. You know, no. we sat looking at people going, well, okay, we look younger than they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, don't they look old? <laughs> like that no we don't <laughs> it's quite yeah. funny. no funny enough I was doing the same thing as well yeah. oh yeah this is my age bracket now yes yeah. <laughs> exactly um, anyway yeah anyway that's over and done with but I have to say my arm still hurts yes and it's been painful um, this week still yeah and I was trying to decide whether it was to do with the vaccination or whether um I've been doing quite a bit of knitting so whether it's I've got a little bit of a, an injury um from knitting so I did have a quick scoop around the internet which is actually a dangerous thing to do because you find all sorts of things you don't want to find yeah you do but um I did find someone who who spoke about um a bicep injury with knitting and apparently it's not uncommon to get that part of your arm um a little bit like um like to start a frozen shoulder if you're not careful so they said if you get that just stop straight away and just give yourself a break for a few days to you know get some um uh, try and get the, the swelling to reduce kind of thing basically because you just inflamed I don't know if it's a nerve or or the no, muscle that's got inflamed I don't know but oh that's all because I've I've actually I've stopped knitting at the moment because mainly because I keep giving myself a crick in my my left side of my neck the same I, thing then isn't it yes yeah, and yeah, I can see myself out on the screen you know I can see that yeah. this this shoulder comes up like this and I have yeah. to I'm always doing it I can consciously see it going up and I think no put it down yeah so I've I've stopped at the moment as well for that that same reason. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Really? I mean, yeah, you need Extreme to think about dream knitting. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how people sit and knit for six hours a day or something. No, but, uh, no I know. Yeah, but then again, I suppose they might say, "How do you sew for six hours a day?" So, which I don't do these days either. <laughs> That, not because I can't, but because I get bored. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay. All right. Well, look, shall we get down to the nitty gritty then? Okay. The, ni- the nitty gritty. Oh, I like that. The nitty gritty. Because <laughs> I've got a finish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. i got a finish. Shall, shall I put it on? Go on then. All right then. I'll be back. Are you ready? <laughs> Reveal. <laughs> She's mad as a hatter. Look! Look! I finished it! Can you see it? I can't see it. I'll put some photos in, some proper photos of it and everything so you can see it nicely, but look! Da 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 da! That's your flax sweater. This is my tin can knits, free pattern, Flax sweater. There are so many. Everybody's making them, but um, it's all blocked and dried, and it's so nice. I'm so pleased with it. It looks comfy, actually. It is. Um, now I I knit it to a I knit it to a medium. I knit it to a medium, but when I blocked it with a, a few little tips from Kelly at Celtic Cast On. Thank you, Kelly. Um, I, when I blocked it, I actually blocked it quite aggressively. Is that what they say? Yeah. Yeah. So when I blocked it, it actually blocked out at the next size up measurements, which was, was fine because I don't know if you remember, I was quite mm-hmm. So, a bit tight, yes. 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 So um, it's actually, I think actually it's it's a oh, really, cool. 
yeah really nice fit um, I am so so pleased with it so um so the, the wool is um it's drops Nepal can't remember the color the color of it though but I can find that out and put it on um I will have to wear something underneath it what because it's itchy or yeah because it's yeah. a little bit itchy um especially across the sort of the back of the neck I think I think I would always wear something underneath the wall in it anyway wouldn't you I would yeah. as well actually personally yeah. But, yeah um but yes so yes it is it is finished it lovely is... well done you yes I'm so pleased the trouble is the weather's turning isn't it so I probably won't get a chance to wear it this winter but um there we go. Yeah, I think you will. Um, because we've still, still chance of snow, you know. <laughs> oh, so, do you know, somebody did say somebody did say to me that there was a chance we might get some snow yeah. at Easter. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's anyway. You you you're ready and prepared if it does. <laughs> I am. I am. So I'm just going to put that on. Just uh... yeah. Oh, lovely. Lots of nice that around it. Yeah. Yeah, so nitty finish. Nitty finish. So you got some <laughs> on the needles coming up. Pardon? Have you got something else going on the needles or on the needles? So, you know? Yes, I have. Um, so I then decided I wanted, I wasn't going to do anything too big and I was just going to do something fairly small. So I picked up the uh, two by two hat by Anne G, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, it's, it is literally oh. a two by two. Two by rib rib hat that looks nice um which i have i'm i'm well on the way to it with um and i'm doing it in um it's a hayfield aaron oh is that one of the bonus ones yeah it, bonus uh hey, yes and it's left over from i made a jumper if you my first yes. jumper, I, don't yeah. I had quite a lot left over you look like you could make several hats <laughs> A whole matching coordinating set out of, out of this um so yes i'm just i've just started i'm well on the way to doing the um the shaping for the right the top of it now Brown. um but like i say i've had to put it down for the time being because because of me cricking my neck so mm. but it's just you know it's simple um it's just mindless two by two rib that you can sit in front and do yeah ribbing takes a long time though doesn't it yeah yeah nice though yeah, so um so yes, I'm I'm just gonna work. Yeah. yeah. So there we go. You're making a whole stream of those from what's left over. Oh, I think there'll be scarves and all sorts coming out of that to be honest. Yeah. Um I because I on my hat I did um I did a German twisted cast on. Oh, that's quite yeah. complicated too. Well, yes, and I, I, I thought, oh, I'm going to challenge. I'm, yes, I'm going to do a simple hat, but I'm going to challenge myself. So it, it was a German twisted cast on, and I watched so many different YouTube videos on this. And do you know the one that I that just clicked with me was Justin from um, the Bearded Pearl. Oh, really? Hey, right. Um, he's done. He did one for socks. You know, casting on for the the top of your socks. Yes. And, oh, yes, um, did, didn't it? yes, I remember yeah. seeing that. Yeah. And I followed him, and he was the only one that I suddenly thought, oh my God, yes, now I get it. Yeah. No, do you know what? I was doing something else at the time. It was on in the background, so I wasn't actually paying attention to it because it was like one of those things, oh, I don't need to know that at the moment. But hmm. How about you? What have you got? Have you got anything knitted finished? And it, yes, I have. I finished my, my socks. Oops. I finished me. Fall off the chair. The socks. Oh, nice. So, yeah, I'm pleased with those. I haven't worn them yet, so. Um, they look lovely. Block them, so they've been blocked. Um, yeah, it was uh, West Yorkshire Spinners, my favourite. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's called, called, called Kingfisher. And I just did sort of bog standard 
um, 64 stitches knitted for as long as I wanted to. I made these slightly longer. These normally I only go for little ankle ones, but I went for slightly longer ones this time. Um, it's got heel flap and gusset and a rounded toe. So just a, what do they call that? A vanilla sock. Do they? I believe so, yeah, because there's no pattern on it. So Okay. Very nice. They look lovely. Look nice. So, yeah, very pleased with that. I like the colourway. Nice. So, when I was knitting these, Steve, Steve says, they're not for me, are they? I said, no, I didn't think you'd like those. When I finished them, he says, oh, I quite like those. Oh, and, good. Yeah, he said, good to have them. Yeah, so that's that. So I finished that. So I'm pleased with those. You're good. Uh, they're done. Out the way. Um, so that's one finish. And then I've got a crochet finish. A crochet finish, that's unusual. I've got a crochet finish. Um, I did I did one of these baskets with a wooden base. Yes. So I got a wooden base. I got it from Stuart at the wool patch. Can you see that? That's yeah, it can, yeah. I've got that camera, I can probably stick it under there. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's better. There he is. So that's um, what 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 does he call his sheep? It's a lady, it's a girl sheep. I've forgotten what he calls her now. Oh, I don't know. Um, I want to say Daphne or something. I don't know if it is, but I can't remember what sheep is called. But anyway, that's his little logo. So it's, it's uh, the, from the wool patch. And these these bases, these wooden bases are made locally. I've, and I'd spotted these on the internet um, maybe a year or so ago. But they, they will be being, may they be made, but they, Russia or somewhere like that, they will be made. And I've not seen any of them in this country at all. Hmm. On, on Stuart's last podcast, he said he'd got them in. Um, he'd got them made. And so I jumped on his site as quick as possible okay. and um, picked the, this one up. So this is the medium. I think I want to say this was a 10 inch base. I think it's 10 inches, but it was the medium size one. Nice. And then um, the, the actual um wool it's not wool it's um this stuff hooked spaghetti yarn oh yes is it like t-shirt jersey no, it's like t-shirt material so um can you see that or not Probably yeah not. yep so it's called hooked spaghetti let's try and get a bottom that one there hooked spaghetti or sp yeah Spaghetti with a Z. <laughs> I'm not sure how you say that. Yeah. Um, that colourway, I think it's just taupe. I think it's called taupe, I think. Nice. Yeah, taupe miracle, the colourway is called. So it's um it's quite nice. Um, did I did I like the it's quite thick and chunky. Okay, it's quite difficult to work with. Right. And I didn't do a particularly good job in crocheting it. So this is my um my pancake one I do want to make another one it's my pancake one but it's been really useful because I've been having all my my knitting sat at the side of me in it so but since having made this one I didn't like the way the back joined it was horrible I didn't like that oh, at all yes that's quite noticeable isn't it yeah so um I did think about ripping it out and doing it again I thought no do you know what just leave it it's a mm -hmm. you know, pancake one and mm -hmm. since then I've learned I've noticed there's a couple of websites and YouTube's that show you how to do a better join. So, okay. well, not a join, you just keep on going. Basically, it looks like knitting and it won't look like crochet, it will look like knitting by the time it's done. So, I'm going to do that next time, but um, I'll, I'll do that in a couple, couple of months or something, not yet. So, but anyway, it's really nice because it's I can get everything in it. So, yeah. which is good. So, um, but yeah, not my finest work, but you know, who cares? <laughs> It, was, it, was, it only took me hours. Yeah, so I spent like three hours doing it. So it's like it wasn't a huge investment in time. So um, if, I if, I if I don't like it, nice idea with it being the wooden base, I can just rip it out and I can use it again. So yeah, so, yeah. I think I think next time I would probably. I don't think I'd go for this again. To be honest, no, no. It's 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 very thick. You need um, a big. Where did I get the um, the hook? Um, what size hook? I don't know what size hook I use, but <clears throat> really I could have done with using a bigger size hook. But the problem is, the bigger the hook size, the bigger the head of the hook, and you can't get the crochet hook through the hole. So um, you have to put your hook through the the wood base right. as well. And it was, I just, it was, I, so I had to use a small hook 
to get the head through. And then I suppose I could have gone to a bigger size hub, but I didn't because I was kind of like, I was already using it and I couldn't be bothered to get out of my chair and go and find another <laughs> one, actually. But <laughs> anyway, it sits on the side and it's fine. It does Good. what I wanted to do, which was to hold a project I'm working on. I'll show you in a minute. So, so that, was, that was one finish. Yeah. But I did make another basket. So I made this one, which is actually a cover for, I've got a glass bowl. So I made a cover for it. So. That's put it nice. Put it on, yeah, let's have a look. Is that with the rope? It's with, with rope. Hold on. Change hands. <laughs> How did you get the, did you just slide it on over the top of the basket, uh, the bowl then? I did. Yeah. So. Um, that looks so nice. I'm not sure if it's going to actually, st it's not going to stop up right. Let's leave it like that. Yeah. That's, that's a good, so don't look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what you need on there, don't you? You need a curly seam sticker. Oh, yeah. Well, I've got one. <laughs> have you got any of those? <laughs> I do you have some curly seam stickers. Yeah, good thinking. Good plan. Good plan. Wait, uh -huh. nice though, Tracy. Hello. It looks so nice. Yeah, so, I do, so it's just this stuff. Yeah. So it's just, it starts off just cream. It's like a cream flat. It's a flat braided. There's no, it's not round, it's flat, which is the prop, which was the problem. Okay. This oh, was okay. my first. What I had in my head was a proper rope. And um, I don't know what this stuff is, but it, it was like, shall I send for something? Oh, I actually think I might have something. And so I went looking, found that. Oh yeah, that'd be like, that's just what I want. Then of course, once you start to stitch with it, you very quickly realise that because it's not round, it's flat. Mm -hmm. It sews together quite well, but it doesn't do quite what you want it to do. <laughs> so it's quite stretchy as a result. It's actually quite, it can, it can, uh, mm. it can actually, it doesn't look like it can, but you can actually add quite a lot of tension to that. And right. depending on how much tension you apply as your I'll go back one stage. When you when you're making the bowl, you you start off by making a tiny little coil. Yeah. Stick through it, which is what this is here. That's why it doesn't look very good. But hey ho, that's on the bottom. We're not going to see that. <laughs> so you make your little coil, and then I've used a triple zigzag stitch. So it's a stitch that goes um, stitch, 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 stitch. And it does it. It takes three stitches every zigzag. So it's a, it's a stretchy zigzag stitch basically, but it means that doing the three zigzags as opposed to one zigzag, it means you've got more chance of catching the rope every time you've created a coil. Let's see if I can find an end. This is better now. So, so you start off making a, a coil basically, like that. And then you've got to stitch it both in both directions, just hold it. And then you put that on under your presser foot and then you just basically keep zigzagging. Mm. And it, it, it makes the coil get bigger and bigger and bigger until you get to a point that you're ready to start building the sides. And then you can turn the base and depending on how much tension you put on the, the, um, the rope can dictate how tight the coil is and whether it goes upright or whether it does this you know you can you can direct the the build if you like so the the sculptural build so I was playing around with it basically just to see how much um, I would need to how much tension I would need to apply to actually get it to get the shape I wanted to uh, but with it being flat it didn't quite have the um it wasn't thick enough and strong enough and supportive enough to make it stand on its own properly it was too it was more like a floppy hat really by the time I'd finished with it to be honest so I decided that I would um make it into a cover for the bowl so basically I, I put it put it on the bowl then I, I blocked it over the bowl so I put it in water okay let it sit and yeah. soak in, let all the water soak in, like you would pair of socks, whatever. <clears throat> and then um, I let it um, dry over the shape of the bowl. So the bowl was a mould right. for the basket. So I've no idea what it would look like if I take, take the the um, the glass bowl out. No idea. But so, and this bit, the bit around the, oops, yay. Working backwards, God damn it. That's it. That's it. Just about see it. So the, the orange rim <clears throat> is just when I finished. I thought I got it to the size I wanted to. 
then I just did a little satin stitch all the way around several times just to build up an edge to make it look a little bit decorative. So that's really yeah. nice. It looks lovely. Yeah. So it looks nice. I mean, you can use it, I guess, for a plant pot, or I mean, I'm just going to throw some odds and sods in it. I had to, you know, old bits of wool, whatever. So yeah, yeah. I was quite pleased with that. Yeah, very nice. Okay, it's all the float is a hut. So, yeah. I've got no dressmaking. Um, I haven't got any dressmaking yet. I've just started. Oops. Oh, did you? Because you were going to send for a pattern, you said, I think, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I sent for, I sent for Seamworks. Um, well, not send for, I'm part of the Seamwork Club. Yes. I have been for a long time. I was going to, uh, I was going to stop subscription and I thought, oh, actually, no, I quite like it. Even if I'm not making, I still like looking. So, yeah. Yeah. so it's called the Benning Dress. And I just fancied a nice, loose late spring dress basically to go down the beach and um I saw this one it was it's there's no zippers and nothing it's like over your head it's no it's grown on sleeves so no sleeves to put on um it's got a waistline about two inches above your natural waist and then it's basically a gathered skirt with a a gathered flounce at the bottom so mm -hmm. very basic and a, and a v-neck and it's a v-neck so, um, so very basic, but I haven't done any sewing for a while. So this is going to be interesting how we get on with it. So yesterday I actually cut the dress out, um, but I've got this, this gash fabric. I don't know if I'm going to like it until I've, I've made it, to be honest. We'll see. So it may end up being used as a night dress if I don't like it. <laughs> but Fair enough. It's Ooh. rather a large, bold print. I think I like it. Oh, I think I do. Oh, I like it. I think it looked better when it's fully made and and the other bit, but it's nice and drapey. It's got a lot of drape to it. And I think it's going to take the gather as well. You um, you won't get lost. You won't you won't lose you on the beach. It's a bit, yeah, I've got a feeling I might look like a bit, a bit like a moo moo down the beach. I think. <laughs> we'll see. But it's ideal. I I don't care down the beach. Who cares? Nobody cares. Exactly. No, exactly. And you uh, sure when you get out, it's easy, to, easy to put on and take off. That's mm -hmm. what I want really. So. Yeah. And it will dry quick, you know? Yeah. Oh, so I I, when the gathers are there, everything's going to calm down a bit as well, isn't it? Should do. I don't know. Anyway, it was dirt cheap. And I, I thought, you know what? I'll do it this first. If, <laughs> if it looks all right, I'll make another one. Use it as your pancake. Yeah, well, hopefully it won't be a pancake, but we'll see. So I did do, I did mess around with the pattern a little bit. So I have... I dropped the um that's the uh, that's the front basically so yeah it's gonna look really big and bold isn't it we'll see i'll reserve judgment till it's made um <laughs> yeah i just dropped the the bust off a little bit just to to lower it a little bit for more mature figures okay so for anybody who doesn't know tracy likes tracy likes a little bit of sea swimming don't you she likes to i do like sea swimming yes i do yeah, yeah. 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 So I've got, i'm a, I'm a, a warm weather sea swimmer i don't i've got a friend who goes all year round and like the, the sea temperature will be two three four degrees centigrade there's no way i'm going in that so i know i like to wait it's like 16 degrees and then i'm fine <laughs> <laughs> even then that's cold but <laughs> so, does she wear a, a suit does she wear um... uh, i think i think yeah she did eventually get one i think she got yeah. a, a half one to be honest so, uh, yeah. okay right what have we got then? We got any, you, uh, any other kind of sewing? Um, no. I've, I've got a sewing finish. Come on then, let's have a look. So, some bright spark at the quilting group that I go to suggested to the other ladies that we consider making a Moravian star. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to know who that bright spark was? Was it you? It was. God, I'm cursing it. Big mouth. So, so I did make it. Oh, it looks nice though. So I got some of those fabrics. Yeah, who is it? It's the Australian uh, lady. Uh, oh, yes. I don't know. I don't, it was from yeah, a jail. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link when we discover who it is. But yes, I've got it's um because i've got a skirt made out of one of them oh yeah so it's paper piece it's english paper piecing on 60 degree triangles triangles diamonds 60 degree diamonds 
and um, I think possibly I should have done it on card as opposed to what I did use and I, we were talking about it and we ended up going for a, a pelmet violin which is stiffer okay. yeah and, and also you can get some pelmet violin that is sticky so the idea would have been that you would have stuck but I didn't have any so again I didn't want to go and buy anything so I thought I'll use what I've got and what I ended up using was the stuff that goes in the bottom of a bag that you can cover yeah yeah so I, it's all bag making stuff I don't know it's like a like a it's like a very compressed wadding uh, a batting it's, it's really compressed so you know eighth less than an eighth of an inch thick it's really really thin but it's it's actually quite um springy and bouncy as well so i mean i can do this and it will spring out again you know Which, like that. but you wouldn't be able to do that with card so there's got advantages and disadvantages but because of that um the glue i was using a glue stick the glue stick wouldn't stick the fabric to the foamy stuff i was using mm -hmm. so I, I ended up having to sew the patches to the um template shape the diamond template shape before I could actually stitch them together. So it was like, oh, this is way too much work. Way too much work. Yes. But, and there's 60 of these darn things. 60. Yeah, mad. I know, I know. Mad. So, um, so there's, there's 12 sides, which I think is a... There's 12 sides of five diamonds. So I'm assuming... Is that a dodecahedron, 12? Oh, I have no idea. I anyway, know. I was trying to decide whether you would classify it as a 12-sided object or not, because it's got 12 faces, so I would have thought it would have been a 12-sided object, wouldn't it? I don't know. Mathematicians out there, help me out on that one. Yeah, let's know in the comments. I have yeah. no idea. But it it's looks got... very nice, though. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. I'm quite pleased, so I don't think... You're going to be making more? Um, do you know what? I said I wouldn't, but if I can get the right... If I can get the right template stuff i might give it a go and do another one um because um it's it's ashfield designs isn't it they do a um a Hit. an english paper piecing inside that you leave in um oh yeah yes i forgot about that yes um now whether you'd be able to stick to that or not i don't know i can't, I can't uh, hexiform i think they call it Hexifoam, yes, I have got some of that. I've used that in the past, actually. Yeah. I did actually, after, I did find these afterwards, which are, these are... Yeah, Lina Patchwork. Lina Patchwork, Lina Patchwork.com, English paper piecing. Yeah, Lina Patchwork.com. So, but these, I got a couple of shapes. I think we bought these when we thought we were going to make some other kind of projects and one years and years and years ago, but you know, but these are very, these are very thin papers. They're at ideal size, but they're not, they're not thick in or not thick enough, enough or sturdy enough. No. So they would, they would crease and you know, they'd be used, wouldn't be good for that. I don't think. They're meant to be, they're meant to be taken out, aren't they're they? Meant, Maybe yeah, layered, yeah. layered some up and glued them together. Yeah, I reckon that's too much work there. Um, it is. And it's even it's then, it's not that stiff. There's the woman who, who sewed those over the top of those. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will do that. I will do that. <laughs> if, I find, if I could find some... They, they, by the way, you've got 360 two-inch diamonds. Oh, yeah, we had a big discussion about how do you measure a diamond? What is... When you measure a diamond, exactly what are you measuring? So, obviously, with a 60-degree diamond, all four sides are the same size. Mm -hmm. so, so this is a two inch and I think these ones are a one and a half inch these are one and a half inch ones I believe yeah yeah <laughs> did you um did you sew them together by hand or by machine I sewed everything by hand right okay I sewed everything by hand so you're starting with um five faces you've got five faces of five yeah Okay, I'm not giving anything away here, by the way, because there's loads of free tutorials for this. So it's five faces of five, and those each face you can sew like traditional um, English paper patch, English paper piecing by putting the right right faces together and then whip stitching or yeah. doing um, the flat back method, whichever way you want to put it together. Yes. 
Um, and I think I used flat back and I tried lots of different techniques. I went for flat back in the end for the, for the, for the surface, the five and the surface. But then when you come to put them together, um, I did try doing it right sides together, but you can't get these points poked through easily. The, the, the points that, which I can't get my hands right side, so this one. You can't, this point, these points, you can't get it poked through. So you have to really sew those from the, put two wrong sides together and then sew from the outside. Okay. And so I used a ladder stitch to stitch those together. So you can't see too much of the stitching. No, you can't, no. But I, I was fed up with it in the end, so I just... <laughs> yeah. Right there. And what about this um, this lovely quilt that we've got underneath, um, under your oh. clothes? Is that a finish or is that... It's waiting for a binding. Right. It's waiting okay. for a binding. Let me... Let me readjust myself somewhat. That's like an elongated hexagon, isn't it? It's a, oh, what do they, is there's a name Actually, for it? No, if you look at it, you've got to look really closely, but it's made from chisel blocks. So this is, this is a pattern I put together because I had, <laughs> I've got an Aki quilt cutter, yeah, and I, um, I have a chisel block and the chisel block should have come when I ordered the chisel block many years ago, it should have been a part of two. You should have had a chisel. The chisel, if you know, the chisel is, if it comes down here, across here, and does that. Oh, uh, yeah, you can't really see that on the... Right, uh, you might see it on... On that fabric anyway. Can you see it on that fabric? Oh, you can see it on that one a bit better, yes. So here's the chisel. Okay. The chisel is supposed to come with a triangle that goes with it to make it into a rectangle. Anyway, it never came with it, and um, so I ended up having a chisel with nothing else to match into it to make it into a rectangular block. So I thought, oh, I need to play around with this, see if I can come up with any shapes and designs. And yeah, yeah you can come up with the elongated hexagon, which I think is also known as a cathedral window. I think I think this I think that, that block that the this the um, Honeycomb is elongated is, called, is also called a cathedral window. I think it's okay. I'm fairly sure it's called that okay. as well. Um, but you've got the two patches coming together to create it. Mm. And um, anyway, I quite like the look of it, but it's basically put together on on the diagonal to create that. So you need, oh, to, okay. you need to pin everything out to make sure you've got the, the, the right fabrics coming in the right place. Mat matching each other, yes, that's yeah. what I mean. I mean yeah. It's not the easiest of things to do and it's quite a time consuming and, you, and trying to match up everything can be quite time yeah. consuming as well. But um, see, now I don't mind doing that. So that kind of thing I don't mind doing. <laughs> It looks very nice, and the quilting on that looks, looks yeah, amazing. Yeah. So the quilting is a is a new design I've been working on, uh, which I'm hoping gets released this week. Actually, it's called Paper Clips. I called it Paper Clips in the end. Oh, yeah, it's really good. So sharing this, okay? Yeah. So, yes, we can now. Yep. Okay. So that was a design I've just put together. I'm hoping that gets released this week. But um, so I've been working on a number of designs all based on a similar shape. So I've, I really like, it's one of the few that I really like that I've made myself. <laughs> so, oh, I love it. I think it looks really good. Yeah. It, anyway, so I tried, I quilted it out. Um, I quilted it out twice. And I quilted it out um, really to, to, for two reasons. I wanted to try out all of the repairs that were done on the machine. I wanted to make sure my computer was working. Yeah. And I wanted to make sure that the mechanics on the machine were working properly because I said I had a few skip stitches. And this particular design is actually made up a lot of verticals and horizontals. Yeah. And you, for any long arm, well, any machine, but long arms in particular, if you are stitching right to left in a, in a straight line, and if you are stitching bottom to top in a straight line, you're pushing, you, you really are pushing your machine to do you know, because you, it, the hook's rotating round and it's trying to catch the thread. We've talked it, about this before, haven't we? Yes, mine mine won't go it. from, it won't go from right to left in a straight line. I yeah. needed a couple of quilts to, to test the design out and I needed yeah. a couple of quilts to test the, the, the repair and the mechanics. Um, okay. So um, I thought this would be ideal. And um, both of the quilts, I've got another one in my hand here. I know. Both, you're both of the quilts are of a similar nature in so much that they're both constructed on the bias. So the fabric is on the bias. Okay. So because 
that's all been pieced in a diagonal fashion. It means all of those and quilting through a bias. And that's another thing that you've got to think about when you're quilting as well, because you, your, your, your straight of grain is not, is not directly on either this way or that way. Your machine is also going to have, an, it won't have an issue necessarily, but it's going to be an added difficulty for it or challenge for it sometimes it has no effect sometimes it does and you know you may have to think about reducing your fabric tension for example the fabric sa the sandwich tension to allow the needle to go through nicely without causing puckers and all the rest of it so so I thought these were the two most difficult things I could throw at it really to see how it performed and uh, as it happened I was really pleased this was the second test I did this was the first test I did and this was a um whoops a Suze is it Susie Williams what's a Susie Phillips Oh yes, Susie Quilts, yes. And I think this might be the Maypole pattern. I actually can't remember. So can you see that? You can, yeah. So again, this is this is straight of grey here, but by the time it's all been pieced together, everything's on the bias. Yeah. Okay, so you've got like yeah. four quarters coming together yeah I can't stand up back anymore I'm right in the corner no okay. but anyway so this that particular quilt oops get myself in before I knock it over um it's made from art gallery fabric I made that uh, I, this top was piece a little while ago actually um it's made from art gallery fabric so art gallery fabric is also quite a tight weave yes in comparison to other fabrics yeah. so that was another challenge that I was throwing at it and I put I put Matilda's own in it. So the blue one has 80-20 and this this one has Matilda's. So Matilda's is a thicker batting. Yeah. And I um, also put a thicker thread in the top. So I want to, so really basically I am asking my machine to do everything at a at, a, at the most challenging level that it can do to see yeah. where it could do and that's what I'd like to do to make sure I feel comfortable putting a custom quilt on yeah and it looks, it looks like it coped with it all okay well it did but I had skip stitches on this one so this one I quilted out as a lot bigger size so I want again I'm, I'm looking to see what the pattern looks like at in this case 14 inches versus the blue one which is at I think that was at six inches so it's a huge difference in the size mm. uh, because again asking a quilting machine to stitch back for six inches is a little different than asking it to stitch back for 14 inches yeah yeah so again I'm just testing out to see you know now of course this is my machine I've no idea what anybody else's machine can do but if yeah. I know I can make it work on my machine then there shouldn't be a reason why other people couldn't make it work on their machine yeah. as well with me. So this is a problem when you buy, these are digital patterns that long armors are putting through their robotic machines. You've no idea how their, mach their machine is set up. You don't know what their setup is. You don't know what needle they've got in their machine. You know, that's, that's for them to decide obviously, but the success of a digitized pattern is only going to be as good as the machine that's quilting it. Yeah. With me. And, and the ability of the quilter to understand how to make that pattern work. Yes. So, but as a pattern designer, I feel that I need to understand for my machine, what that pattern, how that pattern performs, mm. if you with me. So that's what I've been doing. So I've been doing a lot of testing basically. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, this one itself, so it's quilted at larger, a larger size. I did have some skip stitches. I've repaired the skips. I'm not particularly happy. This is this is the quilt for me. So I would never give a I would never give a customer quilt back. I would tear it out and redo it if I didn't I didn't like it. Mm. I haven't done that. I've just repaired them. And now what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to do some handwork on it. <laughs> oh right, I mean. So I thought I thought what I'd do is where where I've got the the long lines that did give me a few issues. Not all of them gave me an issue. Just a few of them. Yeah. I'm going to to um i'm going to put in maybe a pearl cotton or maybe even a, a 12 weight wool maybe even yeah and i'm going to over stitch and i'm going to add some additional surface embellishment to it okay so that way i don't have to unpick everything yeah. 
I've still got a quilt that I could use if I wanted to use it. Well, I will use it now. I won't throw it away or anything. So, but um, it just gives me another another chance to do something else with it, basically. Yeah, great idea. Yeah. So that's that's that. Nice. So, but so it's a quite it's quite weighty. Yeah, it looks. I can see the way you're clutching it. It looks. Yeah. Like it is. You've got one on the back then. I can see it on the back. Got one at the back there. Yes, I have. So that was the. Well, hold on, hold on a minute. I'm going. I'm going to pinch. I'm going to pinch fibre hustles. You made that. I made that. <laughs> I did. Yes, that was the one we discussed before. So it was lots of um, orphan blocks, and um, some of them have been knocking around for quite a while. Um, these, this one up here, this sort of. These, these have been all been hanging around for quite a while. They're all, they were hand pieced, most of them. Um, this one down here at the bottom is a, a newer one. Um, but yes, I just wanted to put them all together and the some of the backgrounds don't match. They, it's all a bit of a mishmash, but it's it's all just thrown together. And um, and then I did lots of sort of free motion quilting all over it, and I will insert a little bit of footage yeah. on that. Fabulous. Now. lovely yeah so it's um yeah it's it's a leftovers it's nothing fancy it's I like it well it's really nice i like the way you've you know laid the colors out and everything and you've got yeah. you know, rainbow order and <clears throat> nice i put it into eqa and had a little play with it and um it's got uh, a wool wadding in this one um and it's been washed it all came out all right. It's been washed and dried, and it, yeah. yeah, it's just for us. It's going to go on our bed, and um, I'm quite pleased with it. Anyway, I'm quite. Yeah, pleased. It looks lovely. yeah. yeah. I enjoyed. Nice. I enjoyed the quilting of it. It um, it's been quilted within an inch of its life, as you could probably see from the photos. But um, I just tried everything on there that I could possibly think of to try, really. So um, there's bits of everything. There's hearts. There's feathers. There's. Yeah geometrics there's root bit of ruler work and yeah nice bit of graffiti quilting yes yeah yeah so yeah, uh, so yeah quite enjoyed that quite enjoyed that so yeah please Excellent. please with it okay yeah and you've got another one on your frame in progress i can see uh, yes that's one that's uh, i'm doing that as a block of the month with my my patchwork classes mm -hmm. um and um, that's my sample one all just made up. It's, it's, actually, it's actually waiting for the next board fabric, which um, I was saying to you earlier, I thought I'd ordered, but it looks like I missed it off the order. So I'll have to order again. Oh, oh nice. what a blow. Oh, no. But um, it's all gone together quite nicely. So I'm quite pleased with, um, with how it's gone together. So I like the color, um, the color palette's really nice. Yes, yeah, it's uh, it's grunge, bit of grunge, a uh, bit of laundry baskets, um, linen texture, bit of macaua. Yeah, all all a bit of a random mix of different makes, but um, yeah, I yeah. quite enjoyed doing it yeah. actually. <coughs> Very nice. Quite enjoyed it. Lovely, lovely. So um, quilty wise, I think that's I think that's it really. So yeah. did you have any um, pantry provisions? Have you bought anything? I do. Actually, before we move off of quilts, a yeah. um, little bit of a detour somewhat, but it is to do with quilts. Actually, I thought, thought I'd show you this. Yesterday, I 
I made a Simnel cake. Have you, have you ever made a Simnel cake? I haven't made one, no. Okay. So I wasn't really sure what a Simnel cake was until one of my friends um, was telling me about it. And I thought, oh, that sounds really good. I'm going to have a go. So, and I don't know if this is a, a worldwide cake or not. Um, I know that in the UK, we make a Simnel cake for Easter and or Mothering Day. Right. And um, it basically, it's a fruit cake, isn't it? It's a fruit cake with marzipan in the middle. So you've got almond paste in the middle of the of the fruit cake, and then you top it with marzipan. Yeah. And you decorate it with marzipan balls, eleven marzipan balls, and the, the eleven marzipan balls are to represent the eleven apostles. So you you, you leave Judas off the list. Okay. okay. So you've got, but anyway, so I made this yesterday, but it got me thinking about um, there's a quilt called the supper quilt. Have you ever seen the supper quilt? No, don't think so. Right. Well, I, I actually thought it'd be quite nice to show people the supper quilt because it's actually a spectacular quilt. So I'm going to share the screen again and pull it up if I can. Okay. So uh, let's pull that one up. So that's a similar cake. And that'll be why I've never made one, probably, because I, I don't like marzipan. Do you not like marzipan? No. Right. I actually quite like marzipan. So almond paste or marzipan, I think it's one and the same, isn't it? Is a picture of the, the Last Supper. So everybody knows The Last Supper, Leonardo's Da Vinci's Last Supper. Yeah, so that was, the, yeah. you know, in the, uh, the wall of the monastery. Is that the monastery? No, where it is. But this is the um, Leonardo version in quilt form so it's made by this fella here who is a, 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 um, a retired dentist actually called Donald Locke and he made the Leonardo da Vinci uh, uh, fresco into quilt form so it's called the supper quilt it's and it's 15 foot wide so it's like 180 inches wide by 72 inches deep or thereabouts so it's really long really wide and it's made up of something like, I think it's got uh, 51, almost 52,000 pieces in it. Wow. So it's made up of half inch squares, which is huge, isn't it? It is. Absolutely huge and tiny, tiny piece thing. So, so, um, so that was made in, I think he finished it in 1999, I believe. And it was his second quilt. Wow. second quilt he'd ever made but he made it um, because he was keen on photography and he wanted to he was interested at that point in pixels apparently so he was, this was the, one of the very first pixel images you know pixel quilts are quite popular at the moment and have been for the last few years uh, but this was the first one the first pixel quilt basically so you know he, he started with the a print of the, the the fresco and then actually made several images of it in by blowing up portions of it and then making the um making the all the piecing but yes the the lady in this picture is linda taylor and linda taylor um at that point lived in melissa in um texas and that was the lady i went to for long on quilting classes and um she quilted it for him wow so, now the thing is that that quilt um, it took two and a half years to piece and it took Linda three weeks to quilt Ooh. and at 180 inches wide she couldn't put the quilt on the frame lengthwise because she can get maximum about 130 inch quilt on a on a 14 foot frame yeah um so she, she had to load it sideways so it means she was quilting all of those figures sideways on wow so um it, it was an incredible feat for her to do uh, it took her three weeks, I should say, to, to quilt it. And she she started by outlining the figures, I believe, and then went into the walls on the background and then ended up with, um, she did uh, Jesus last of all. Mm. So, but I just thought it just went, because I was making the cake yesterday, it just reminded me of this particular quilt. And I actually had, um, I actually saw it. This is a, a close up of it, of something you can see some of the quilting in it there. Um, I actually saw it when I went to 
I traveled to Springfield in Illinois to go and buy a quilting machine and this was on display. And so this is, this is a photograph I was able to take at the time and I'd completely forgotten about it. So this is in May, 2000, I took this picture. Wow. So it, was, it just made me just, I was reminiscing a bit yesterday when I was making this cake and it just made me th think about it, but I think it's a spectacular quilt. Yeah. Um, you know, retired dentist, second quilt he'd ever made and he had to make it because his wife was the quilter and she refused to do the piecing for him. Well, you know, 52,000 pieces more or less. I think I'd have refused as well. So <laughs> flame her. Go on. See ya. It's a spectacular quilt in in real life it's better obviously than it is yeah. in a picture yeah of course and, um, so yeah anyway so I just thought I'd share that because I thought people might be interested to see that if you it, it has done the rounds it's gone to a lot of places and it did come to England it came to um it came to Chil is it Chilford in uh Colchester where oh, yes. yeah. yeah so it did go there one year I think 2002 maybe I didn't see it in the UK um, but it's done, it's been around the, U, the US a lot, but I think it's now been retired. So I think possibly that it, it's, it may have one or two more outings and that's going to be it. Yeah. Um, um, which is a shame really, but, um, but I suppose it'll get pulled out every now and again. Anyway, so that was that. So yeah, hopefully five minutes of interest. <laughs> well, while we're, while we're on that vein, I um, meant to talk about this last time we got together, but um, I got to, uh, I got a, a fabulous Christmas present this year. Oh, you got that. Yes. Yes. It is um, the, red and, the Red and White Quilts um, book, which um, it's, um, it's an, uh, an exhibition that took place um, in, I think it was, I want to say 2011, but. I might just con confirm that, but it was an exhibition that took place in, in around that time, actually, which was, um, it was a collection of quilts. And the, the amazing thing is, um, was really the incredible way that they displayed it, but also the fact that this is, this is yeah. one person's quilt yeah. collection. Like 650 quilts in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I spoke yeah. about that on my little talk, and if you, we didn't see that at that point. You what, sorry? <laughs> Did actually show that in my little talk. Yeah. Yes, you did. Yes, you yes, frozen. Did. <laughs> I know the, the yeah. internet yeah. keeps coming out today for some reason. But um, yes, Tracy did a, a quilt talk um, recently on Zoom, didn't you? And you you did mention yeah. it in there. But yeah. it, it's an it's a beautiful book. Um, I'm trying to hold it. It's a really heavy book. Yeah, actually. looks it. Um, and it's all it's the red and white collection of this red and white uh, collection from this lady. Yeah, she has 650 quilts, um, 650. Um, oh, I've got the lady's name now. I will tell you what the lady's name is there. Oh, I can tell you, it's, um, it's on the book. Who oh, is somebody? I've got the name now. Where's the turn? Um, hold on. Joanna Rose. Yeah, Joanna Rose, I thought it was, yeah. Joanna yeah. S. Rose, yeah. yes. Yeah. And yeah, um, amazing. Yeah. 653 American quilts from three centuries. Yeah. Um, all various, you know, sizes and styles. Um, and it, it's a phenomenal collection, it really is. And um, so yes, Martin bought me this for Christmas. It's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. book. Not, not a cheap book, I will say. Um, but it, yeah, God, it's so inspiring, so inspiring. There's some red and white, blue and white, but two colour quilts are just really lovely, aren't they? I think they so. are. Yeah, there is. I mean, there's just something about them that there's a, a simplicity and sophistication about them. I think so. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, gorgeous. Oh, pantry and provisions. That was what we were on to. Yes. Have you bought anything? Um, I bought. Um, I bought some more. What have you bought? Uh, I have bought. I have bought myself some of um, the new Macintosh. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Pretty. From, so I, I was hoping to get on to this a little sooner than I, this is called, this is pink grapefruit and this is um, the cashmere base. So, um, what does it say? Yeah, it's 8% uh, fine merino, 20% cashmere. So it's oh so soft really really soft so I was going to make a little little scarfy from it I was hoping to get onto it sooner sooner than I 
well, I'm not going to get onto it now for another few weeks because, oh, I never showed you, I never showed you the make I've got on the go, did I? But I'll show you that in a moment. So I've got a, a project that is taking me a lot longer to complete knitting wise. So, okay. but this will be a nice lacy scarf at some point or other. Lovely, so, very nice. So I'm looking forward to making that. And I am delving deep into my basket. And I bought, again, from the lovely Stuart at the wool patch. I got the new Winwick Mums um, book for, is that the right way around, by the way? Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So West this Yorkshire is, um, Spinners, just for a change. Yeah, West Yorkshire Spinners. So this is winter. So it's, it's season. She's got four socks. So winter, spring, summer and autumn. Okay. And different patterns for each season. So see the winter ones with a nice bit of lace work up the front oh nice yeah. i thought it was about time i moved away from just the basic vanilla okay um that's the summer nice um, let's find the spring that is the spring oh yeah very nice and so what's left autumn autumn is lovely actually i do like autumn but it looks quite complex i might leave that for a little while Ooh, nice colors though yeah. yeah so um do you know i was thinking i was thinking about well it was aaron wasn't it from fiber hustle who was talking about how to display your socks you know we just hang them up like, oh, no, no, no. Can I my socks? And, and I like the way he has shown his socks recently. I particularly liked it when Chip has his feet in the air. Oh, I love that bit. I love that. I really love that. with laughter. Yeah. That bit. <laughs> but I liked how how um, Aaron had um, was photographing his socks in the wild recently. Yeah. yeah. But photographing socks is difficult. I kind of thought yeah. afterwards, you know, sort of how do you show people you makes really? Yeah, that is, is so, that's a good one though. That's a good. Um, yeah, so I quite like how she displays them in here. Um, so anyway, so I bought, I did buy, because I'm ever so hopeful, you know, despite the fact I've got God knows how many other, um, so that's the winter. Summer, <laughs> summer, spring, and autumn. Oh, I love anyway, them. The thing, the thing is, these do fly off the shelf and the books fly off the shelf, so. Your, your made, autumn. As much as I've done. <laughs> Your autumn will go with my quill. The autumn? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Nice colourway, isn't it? Yeah. Can I can I just say as well, you've you've moved your quilting bit, your quilting bit <gasps> on your camera's moved and it's yeah. that's it. There you go. Thank you. Oh no. Is that was that giving you with me a oh, me a little OCD was kicking in? Yeah. Don't want that doing so, so show me how far you got on your socks then. <laughs> Pathetic woman. Pathetic, isn't it? That's Absolutely pathetic. pathetic. <laughs> uh, hey, I cast on. That's a step. Yes. Nice I'm looking forward to doing that actually. But yeah. because they're not vanilla ones, I won't be able to do them in front of the television. So I'll have to sit and do those. You have to concentrate on that. Concentration. I should have mm. to concentrate on that. Mm. I mentioned that I had ordered some wool from Stephen West. Yes, you did, yes. And what I was expecting, what it's I was not expecting, what you got. No. No. <laughs> I ordered a kit because I'm doing the, the winter lights. Right. Yeah. Which is a huge challenge for me. I'll I'll tell you that now. Okay. Really big challenge. Okay. Right. Because I don't do counting well either. That's another thing I don't do well, I've decided. <laughs> So, but the kit I was expecting, I was convinced I was getting kind of like a, a raspberry coloured fade like this or so plummy fade colour. Yes, I remember you get, There's five, five shades, uh, sorry, four shades in the kits. And I thought that's what I'm winning. What I got was this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is nothing like a raspberry fade. Nothing like it. Nothing like it. <laughs> so, um, let me stick that under there. That way for a moment. Um, Wowza. So, um, yeah, yeah, nice and subtle, don't you think? Absolutely. Yeah. You think it's nice and subtle? I yeah. think it's wonderfully subtle. So, a bit, so like, a bit like Stephen West himself. <laughs> um, 
do you know what if I could pull it off like Stephen West I wouldn't I have know. any objections and I just <laughs> don't think I shall you know I should be hiding under it oh, you can't see me <laughs> um do I like the colors first of all I don't dislike them but I'm 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 not a huge fan I'll be honest so not a huge fan all this work into it what's going to happen to it when you've finished with it then You've frozen. What's going to happen to it? I shall bloody well wear it because it's cost me a hundred pounds. <laughs> oh, okay, fine, fair enough. I shall wear it just to sit around the house in. <laughs> no, it's no. Um, I don't know. I think you've got to be quite a brave person to wear. Well, I don't know. Over a dark coat, it could be quite nice, I suppose, couldn't it? Just wrapped over. It would be, yeah, on a on a winter's day, thrown oh. over something. I think it would be stunning. Yeah. So anyway, the actual. It's been a huge challenge for me, huge challenge. So, it, so it starts, it starts off, you know, sort of with this. Uh, what did, I can't even remember what he calls it now, but it's 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 got like this this edge to it, which is rather nice. Um, and yeah, I call and I call it's an I call bind. I call yeah. start. Yeah. But the the beginning bits, I didn't like the beginning bits. So I've actually done. I, I made this to see what I, I didn't like the way I did it, so that got torn out. So then I started with a different colour because I didn't, I thought the colours disappeared, you know, they're kind of like, okay. that's, that's the right way around. Put that under the camera though. Let's have a look at that under the camera. See, that was coming up as a red on your computer screen. But... Oh, it's orange. Yeah. yeah. So you've got red. like this, the five colours are like a caramel, an orange, a, a brown mm. and mustard yellow. That's what they actually are. They're all colours that you you like. Yeah, they are all good. Well, the thing is, when, as I said, that wasn't what I was expecting. And so to begin with, I thought, oh, have, have they sent the wrong thing? And no, they hadn't sent the wrong thing. They sent exactly what I ordered. Okay. So um, how that happened, I actually don't know. So I can only think that was my subconscious ordering colours that I liked as opposed to colours that I thought I liked. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. <laughs> So, so no, no, it's no, it wasn't, they didn't send me the wrong things at all, but I've got all four colours there, the bicycle range, Stephen West or Penelope and, is it Penelope and Stephen? I think there's a range. It's um, their own brand called Bicycle, which I think is quite apt for a wool shop based in Amsterdam. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, but it arrived really quickly, I have to say, and I didn't have to pay any extra. So there was no, you know, customs, which I thought I might have to pay, but yeah. Um, but anyway, the thing is this, it arrived, I looked at it, I was disappointed because it wasn't what I was expecting. It took me quite a while to get started on it. When I did, I wasn't overly sure about, say, one colour word to switch to the other. And I've struggled all the way through it, trying to work out what I'm supposed to be doing because mm -hmm. it's colour work, it's not the easiest thing. It's, it's not a difficult, it's not difficult once you know what you're doing, but I couldn't understand the pattern and I have... I, I was reading it, doing what I thought it told me to do and thinking this doesn't look anything like what it, it is in his pictures. Yeah. And um, so I did eventually find a YouTube that helped me through some of it. Okay. So, um, and now I'm at the point where I'm at the end where I'm adding like a, a lacy bit at the end. And I think there's six repeats at the end of this brownie bit in different colors. Okay. And I've, torn it out three times I've knitted six rows and torn it out three 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 or four times at least oh dear um, and each row has got like 650 stitches on it so that's a lot of stitches being torn out each time because I know it's just not coming out how it's supposed to come out so I, I'm, I'm, I think I must be dyslexic when it comes to knitting patterns because I'm not doing it right right so I will do it I'm persevering I will complete it and so this is a huge you know personal challenge for me to... yeah. <laughs> yeah. we have a few we have a few tutorials coming up don't we we do yes we we are starting well I, we are, we're starting a beginners patchwork and quilting little guide section um which hopefully will cover a few few sort of basic questions if you're starting out on patchwork and quilting you've got a couple You've got you've got another one lined up, haven't you? What's your? I have got one lined up. I've got one. Um, how to join batting pieces. That was it. Yes. And there's a, a little one about how to thread your ends in, as well. Which yeah. 
be, might release sooner rather than later. I'm not sure. Yeah. But we, we're, trying to, we're trying to do a few little, just a few little ones just to, to, to throw in there that hopefully might help out. And yeah, uh, they're just, uh, we're just calling those curly shorts. Or short and curlies. No, curly shorts. Grab yeah, by the short and curly. No, not. No, <laughs> no we're not. No, we're not. Sorry. <laughs> well, hopefully the tutorials well. They might actually instill something in you that says, "Oh yes, I know how to do that now." Yes. So yes, okay. so they should be. We'll start to trickle those out um, as and when. As and when. Yeah. As and indeed. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so um, have you bought anything or? I any, have. Um, I have. No. <laughs> hmm. I um I bought these. I don't you can oh, see bought some minis. These are these I got these from Midwinter Yarns, um, who I've I've purchased things from before and they're lovely. And these are 100 percent Lithuanian linen, heavy lace, light fingering. Um oh. now I bought them because I love the colours. But now I, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Enjoy looking at them. <laughs> don't ask me. <laughs> There's so many things you could do with them, actually, couldn't you? You could make. Do you watch um, Amy Florence? From, um, um, well, she's. Uh, I found her. I've got a word of her podcast. Is it just Amy, Amy, Amy Florence? I forgot what her podcast is called. I can't right. remember. That's anyway, I'll right. find it if it's Tom. She recently showed a scarf, a, um, a double wrap um, cowl, basically, that she made. Right. And she used a set of minis yeah. for each one of the colour changes on that. So that was quite nice. So right. uh, I think, and, and linen would be quite nice to wear as a decorative item in the summer, wouldn't it? Because yeah. it'd be nice and cool. Yeah. So she'd paired like a rainbow set with um, a grey. I'm just going to look up her, um, I'm just going to make sure I can find her um, Instagram because I like Amy, Amy Florence. Yeah, I know, I'm just going to, Stranded Dye Works, that's who she is, Stranded oh. Dye Works. And she's got, she's Amy Florence on YouTube and she is Amy Florence on Instagram. Okay, we'll put all of that below. I will yeah. have a look at that. I just, I love the colours and then they came and then I looked at them and thought, Oh, they're very nice, but what am I going to do with them? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So, um, have you been watching anything recently? Um, not really. No, because there's nothing. There's nothing much good on. But have you been watching Bridgerton? No, I haven't watched Bridgerton yet, but I am going to. You're missing out. Am I? Oh yes. Oh okay. I'll get on to that. <laughs> Just a minute while I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Steady on. Steady on. A, a little aside, my two children have both applied to be extras on the cast of Bridgerton. Oh, fabulous. I, I don't think they've been called up there. I think they would have been called by now if they were going to be, but they both applied, bless them. Oh, you, you know that um, our, our, uh, the fellow that comes to help us in the garden uh, once a fortnight, he, he's an extra. Yes. And he was on, um, uh, oh, what's the other one local to us? You know, the... Uh, I never watched uh, Downton. He was in Downton quite a lot. Yeah. But he was saying because he's he he's a little bit older than me, and he looks like he's a he comes from the thirties or the forties. It's that kind of look about him, you know, sort of. Yeah. And, um, so he tends to get parts like being a chauffeur. Yeah. Or something like that. But anyway, he was telling me he has got um, a part for a completely different role where he's got to be prepared to have long hair, a beard and be completely dirty. And he says, how do you feel about that? He says, oh, I declined it. <laughs> Obviously, but not prepared to go that far. No, he didn't. I thought, oh, I didn't ask him whether Bridgerton was on his list or not. I don't know, but oh, I've, I've really thoroughly enjoyed it. Really, oh, I've, really, I've, really, yeah. I've heard lots of people talking about the costumes. It. The costumes in yeah. it are absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And um, I was reading yesterday about them because <clears throat> I thought it was very, very clever, and um, I didn't think they went to this kind of detail when they were making a, a well period dramas. I know they did go to a lot of detail, making sure the costumes were as close to as affordable I suppose as well as possible to you know practical to make the rest of it but they, they did things like the colour of the costumes 
there was there's, there's Easter eggs attached to them, you know. So, so it's like there's um, a bee would be attached to one family. There'd be a lot of bees in the costumery of one family and a lot of butterflies in the costumery of another family. Right. And that dictates something about them, you know, sort of. The, um, so, you know, it's indicative of, of where they've come from, like the butterflies metamorphosis, for example. So their new money, you know, going into a, um, a society that's an, an established society. So they're trying to make their way. That's one family. And then the other family, the father died from a bee sting, apparently. So um, the bee is there to represent him throughout. Oh, right. but they did also things like the colours that they chose for the costumes when two families came together. So when the two main characters came together, they fused the colours that the man wore with the colours that the girl wore mm. so that they were they were joining. It's, you know, it's sort of like when you literally take two colours in a paint pot and mix them together kind of thing. Oh, right. Which I thought that's really clever because I would never have thought to have gone to that level of detail um I just thought it was very creative personally yeah. I thought you know knowing all the stuff about the background to it adds more to, mm. to the whole program for me so yeah yeah so uh, well, yeah def definitely watch it there yes I but, will uh, do yeah. you, you may not want to watch it with your kids around because they may be slightly embarrassed for you so I, I think that's that's the problem actually because um they did I think they've both watched it. Um, whenever I want to watch it, they're, they're both like, no, I'm not watching that with you. No, no, I'm not watching that with you. No, can't be in the same room with you while that's going on. No, no. So, no. no. Think... So, so, so one of the ladies at the quilting group did suggest that she, that her husband didn't want to watch it with her and he suggested that he would put a, um, a screen in her room so she could watch it while she was sewing as there's no way you can sew and watch that at the same time so yeah, <laughs> it doesn't go together i'm really sorry <laughs> right well thank you so much for joining us and for spending your time with us if you have liked this show then please give us a like down below give us a thumbs yes. up thumbs up and um, yes. don't, forget, don't forget to click the notification button and more importantly the subscribe button Please subscribe. Yes, it'd be lovely to subscribe. We've got a lovely giveaway. We're still waiting to give away. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. You need to get, you need to subscribe because I need to get it out of my sewing room. Okay, so come on. Oh, she'll be making it. She'll be making it up herself soon. <laughs> I will. I will. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Please stay safe. Take care. Be kind. And um, we look forward to seeing you with us next time. Yeah. I'll see you next time. Hopefully it won't be six weeks next time. We'll see. Okay, bye for now.